Hello, just going to continue on here with Days of Noah and read uh, a bit more stuff from the book of uh, Enoch, First Enoch, in uh, the first uh, section of the book and set some of the background for the Days of Noah so we can keep moving forward. Because again, this is only the second uh, uh, incursion of uh, the Elohims in our realm and, and what actually uh, put the seed of Satan involved in our uh, own uh, progeny, the seed of Adam. In direct conflict with each other with their uh, types of intention to sabotage mislead and to direct human beings towards destruction and uh, unrighteousness so reading from um, chapter 10 or no i'm starting back in chapter 9 and uh because we left off where they were teaching things so this is a response from the heavenly court the divine council in uh 9 verse 6. see the what azazel has done he has taught all unrighteousness on the earth and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven which men uh, were striving to learn, you know, like our science technology and trying to get better and at uh, learning ways and means to control people and threaten everybody with violence. Semiaza, to whom uh, thou hast given authority to bear rule over his associates, this is the one who is the leader of uh, the group that came down, the 200 angels that came down on Hermon, where there's, there was that rock there signifying there used to be a temple up on top of Mount Hermon, which is the northern part of Israel in in. Um, well, I can't think of what that area is called there, up towards uh, Lebanon. Uh, but uh, Azazel, the story goes, he came here before by himself and started doing things. And then uh, Semiazza came down with another group of angels because Azazel wasn't pleasant directly. This is why you see Azazel get picked up in the story of being responsible much more than Semiazza. They've gone down and have, to the daughters of men upon earth and have slept with the women and defiled themselves and uh, revealed all kinds of sin. And the women born giants. And the whole of the earth thereby was filled with blood and unrighteousness. And now this is uh, verse nine or verse ten of uh, nine. And behold, now the souls of those who have died are crying and making their suits against the gates of heaven, and lamentations have ascended. And because of the lost deeds on the earth which have been wrought, you know. And, and this is the just like you had the crying and the groaning of uh, during Israel's time in slavery. It's a similar type of thing where the crimes get so bad. Eventually, it's not that God doesn't know. He waits for. Uh, sin to reach its full maturity before it's going to be crushed before he's going to directly intervene with it and this is what we have happening a situation where now god is going to deal with it so in chapter 10 he uh says the most high the holy and great one spoke to Ariel, which is one of the seven archangels there before the throne sent to the son of lamech and said to him go to Noah and tell him in my name hide thyself and reveal to him the end is approaching the whole earth will be destroyed and the deluge is about to come upon the whole earth and it will destroy it Instruct him now that he may escape and his seed may be preserved for generations of the world. So again, his seed may be preserved. Like this is the whole point. God is always moving forward. And at the same time, you can look back from where we are, chapter 6 to chapter 9, where it ends. What was the thing that happened when, after all the stuff was dealt with, what did God tell him? Be fruitful and multiply. This whole thing about being fruitful and multiply. God gave us dominion over the earth. This has always been his generosity, us giving the earth, but we... Um, never seem to understand you know we never followed according to the rules and according to the promises so it's a hodgepodge of both good and evil so now he, he's he's talking this is the most important part now uh, what the story excuse me what the story tells us about the consequences in the supernatural realm again the lord said to raphael another one of these seven uh, archangels before the throne bind his asshole hit and foot and cast him into the outer darkness and this is the beginning of the judgment of what they call in Tartaru, where these fallen angels were put, this group were put in the in in the underground as a in the pit as a as a punishment, and they're there to the last great day before uh, the judgment on the world comes. That uh, they taught the children of men all the secrets of the watchers and disclose this to their daughters and sons, and that's how you know one group has always had the technology, and they continue to interact with uh, these creatures. Through, through their death and through uh, their judgment. And what happened was, and this is what I was saying, where um, when this happened, I'm quoting from uh, Enoch 10, verse 8, and the whole earth had been corrupted by the works that were taught by Azazel, and to him ascribe all sin. And so this is why on the Day of Atonement, there's an Azazel goat in the ceremony where they lay all the sins of Israel for that year on the hands of the goat that represents Azazel, and he gets sent off into the wilderness to die and the other one gets offered as a sacrifice to atone for the sins so that the uh high priest after the order of aaron the levite 
is able to go in the most holy place once for that short amount of time and sprinkle the blood of covenant renewal to cleanse the um, temple sanctuary there so that they can go through another year of sacrifice to make space and clean the space so that God's presence can dwell in their midst and not destroy them. Like all these things have connection, you know, and you got to follow the story through from beginning to end. Once you understand, that makes sense. So Zazel is punished. And uh, this is what I was saying. This is verse nine. And Gabriel said to, uh, and to Gabriel, the Lord said, proceed against these bastards and reprobates against the children of fornication and destroy the children of fornication, the children of the watchers from amongst men and cause them to go forth. Send them against one another that they may destroy each other in battle for a length of day shall, they shall not have. And the request that they made, the, the granted by their fathers, shall not happen on their behalf. And their hope of eternal life won't happen and that each one of them will live 500 years. So this is what I was saying back in one of the earlier lectures where 500 years back, meeting at the same time for 120 for men when the flood came, going all the way back, that tells you how long these giants have been on the earth. That, again, because they were a mixture of... Uh, angelic being in DNA versus our human being it was a hybrid and it never was supposed to be existed. That's why I called it a bastard and reprobate. And what happened when these things died, they were given uh, no place to go because they never supposed to exist. There's no afterlife plan for them or renewal plan or redemption plan, no, no atonement plan. These became dead spirits that wandered, had no place to go. And that's where the demons came from. And that's what most people understand. Fallen angels are, are a different category of, of demons. There's a lot more demons than there is fallen angels, but they, they have a lot of power in terms of strength and stuff like that because they have part of the supernatural characteristics in their being. And that's why, like, when you hear stories about, um, you know, us encountering things through medieval and modern times, like, these suckers have a lot of strength. They have a long memory. They haven't died. They, they, they're not omniscient, so they, they don't know everything. And they also aren't omnipresent, so they can't be ever at once. They're just like us you know walking around in in this space but in another dimension so this is what we're dealing with and this is the most important part as well as far as what's coming in the future that's what happened now this is uh this is what's going to happen that uh michael was told to go and bind semiaz and associates who deny themselves to women see he's dealing with his easel first then he does with semiaz what you don't know when you're reading this is that there's two different things that they were both responsible for one was more responsible than all the rest because they followed Zazel's example. So Semiaza and the other 199, 200 in total that went down to Mount Hermon, they made themselves unclean through participating in this. And the way Jude puts it in his little letter, he says they exchanged their habitation. They became defiled and, and mixing strange flesh and all these two interbreeding of two different life type of characteristics in the genus. So they, their sons were destroyed to just, uh, were, were determined to destroy each other in war, turn against each other and end up killing each other because Man, a lot of men was killed off, and so we couldn't keep feeding these suckers. And so they ended up fighting against each other, killed off all their women, killed off um, the, each other, and they up, then the last of them died in the flood and the judgment. And uh, th this is now where we're at. And their sons have been there and destroyed. Bind them fast for 70 generations in the valley of the earth till their day of judgment and consummation, till the judgment that is forever is consummated. This is the judgment of the last great day, and things get thrown like a fire. And in those days shall she be led off to the abyss of fire, to which torment and prison, in which they shall be confined forever. And whoever shall be condemned and destroyed will be thenceforth bound together to them in all generations. And destroy the spirits of the reprobate and the children of the watchers, because they have wronged mankind. Destroy all of them from the face of the earth, and let every evil work come to an end. And let the plant of righteousness appear and, and, and truth appear. And it shall prove a blessing. The works of righteousness and truth shall be planted in truth and joy forevermore. And all the righteous shall escape. And now shall we get thousands of children in the days of your youth and the old age, and so they shall complete peace. And the whole earth shall be tilled and righteous and shall be planted with trees and be full of blessing. And all desirable trees shall be planted on it, and there shall be planted vines on it. The vines where they are planted on there shall produce wine in abundance, and the seed thereof shown, and shall bear a thousand. And any measure of olives, even ten, presses all of them. So cleanse the earth from all oppression, all unrighteousness, from all sin, from all God and godliness, and the unclean which wrought upon the earth shall be destroyed from off the earth and all the children of men shall become righteous and all nations shall offer adoration and praise to me and all shall worship me and all the earth shall be cleansed from all the defilement from all the sin from all the punishment from all the torment and i never again shall send upon the, uh, the flood upon them from generation to generation you know and so this is what's happening that um this judgment's been been pronounced on these creatures and the flood came and 
this is where you have again now different angels were bound and they're going to be released revelation 9 talks about all these creatures that are going to get released from the bottomless pit and there's things that we have no idea that were created back in those days and how difficult it was for humanity to survive being tormented by these and um when i was reading about the flood the way uh the flood came for 40 days and then it took 150 days to recede there's a six month period like that's a six month period then and there's a six month period that these guys get to torment every human being that isn't marked by the spirit of god and this is uh, the tit for tat so to speak where when they're ruling over the earth god isn't going to intervene to protect every human being he's only going to protect the righteous line which is what the church is all about gathering in and from the gentiles and from uh, the all of israel these two different storylines that merge together in one people called the church so this is what we're getting set up for and and um you know the days of noah weren't a very pleasant time and where this evil is continuing to grow in our culture and we don't recognize it anymore a lot of it which is insanity even beyond the pale uh we just don't recognize it and a lot of people are busy pursuing their own um, pursuits and that's what the christ said in his prophecy in matthew 24 you know, just for a case in point, they talked about they were giving into marriage and marriage and, you know, pursuing their economy and this, that and the other thing. And not recognizing what was going on. And then the sudden destruction came. And that's part of the problem is that we're being set up right now where everyone's being lulled to sleep. And that's what uh, means if you're spiritually unaware, you're sleeping, you know, and it's like nothing seems real to you because it's like you're in a daze or in a dream or in an altered state where, you know, you might be having a nightmare in some areas of your life, you know, and a lot of people may be, but with what's going on in different parts of the world, but they're not able to take it real where they can actually call upon the name of the Lord and be, uh, you know, set free. But this is where we're at. And so I'm just setting things up because, uh, you know, this was part of them ruling over us, but then there became a more structure because at this time they were just human clans. When we get to the Tower of Babel and in chapter 10, after what happened with Abraham and the curse on him and the other things that are coming up and the confusion of languages, this set things up where th there were a group of angels that were put on high, what we know as the powers and principalities of the archons in the Greek and, or, and the principality. Uh, the, these creatures were actually ordained to actually rule over 70 nations. And then the one nation which was coming through Abraham was set up with Abraham being separated. That's what these 11 chapters are telling you. These are telling you where the, the uh, Goyim or the Gentiles or the nations came from how they were separated from a particular group of people that God was working through that the last command given to uh, the Gentiles was to have a basic law, not to kill, not to commit adultery, not to steal, not to lie, to make sure you have proper courts and uh, make sure you didn't, don't get involved in idolatry. And all these, no, uh, these, these laws were called the no Noahide laws or Noatian laws, and they ruled the Gentiles. And then when God made his covenant with Israel, he gave them 10 commandments. Originally, there were only seven. But because he made a particular uh, covenant with Israel that was based on performance and, uh, you know, curse blessing, depending on how they responded to the covenant, that uh, he added a, a couple extra. He added two more to do with idolatry, and he added another day, uh, another one to deal with the Sabbath day. Because the Sabbath wasn't in existence until it was given to Israel as a sign for the covenant to separate them from the Gentiles. and so. You know, I might come and pick back up some more of this stuff to do with uh, the Book of Enoch and some of the other Jubilees and Jasher to talk about this stuff. But, you know, now we realize that uh, this is where demons came from. Fallen angels are in prison. They're going to be let loose during the time of, of the Antichrist reign in the Revelation 9. And, and there's four other big ones that are going to be let loose out of their prison. In other, they're, we're told that they're held in prison under uh, the Euphrates River. So then they, when they're released, they're given um, a uh, capacity to kill. They're, it's, it's, it's really strange because it says they've been waiting all this time to get their vengeance, and they're going to be released for uh, uh, the months, the days, the, the weeks, and the hours because they know they've got exactly six months to wreak havoc on anybody that hasn't been sealed by the Holy Spirit and that have taken the mark of the beast. So, you know, this is on the, we're on the edge of the separation between the righteous and the unrighteous right now. And so, you know, I recommend, you know, you know, people start taking their lives seriously and start realizing that um, maybe some of the things that, you know, because I'm, I'm just trying to explain this stuff in a calm manner to people. I'm not, you know, condemning anyone or accusing anybody of anything. I have to give an account for my own life, but it's the same for you. So I'm just warning you 
there's been a lot of prophets and watchmen record you know it's been hundreds of years they've been warning people but now it stepped up in 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 mass like you can find all throughout the internet people are talking about this stuff it's become loose and now that this knowledge has been made known you can actually really understand what and how things went down and have a better idea of what's coming and not everything is clear God obviously tells us when but he never tells us what or no, I'm sorry he tells us what but he doesn't tell us when you know that we're in the middle of a battle and you don't disclose everything about your uh, battle plan and so that's why at different degrees we have an awareness to be warned just like Noah was warned and his response was to act to build the boat he was protected and you know I mean people ask well how did the Giants get through well they dug tunnels that you know these angels aren't stupid they, they understood the, the situation with air pressure, and so that's why we have all these crazy rumors about underground cities and stuff like that, and, and how there's all these creatures that dwell underground. Like, they, um, that's where they went, you know, and, you know, we find that if you go down the recesses of caves, you start finding all kinds of crazy stuff with bones and stuff like that that a lot of people haven't talked about. But, you know, well, that's as far as I'll go on that, because, you know, at one point it doesn't even really matter. Like, seeing you won't help you believe any better. You know, you just either you believe or you don't. So we'll move on from that and start worrying and connecting the next uh, incursion with the Tower of Babel and then building a tower to the heights and what that was all meaning and, and uh, what the response of God was and what that meant for the nations. Talk to you again.